Guys, it's been rough weather the past week. We even had a little bit of flooding here, but it's uh, it's a beautiful Saturday afternoon. So let me take a look around a little bit for you. I know you love when I just go and walk about. I do too. Let's answer some questions. First thing I have to get is coffee. I need to find myself a coffee. I was up very late. Not an unusual thing. What am I wearing, by the way? It's Batman today. I don't know why I put it on. It doesn't really suit what I'm wearing. I wasn't really thinking. It's a very good go-to watch, the Batman, I think. It's kind of like works in most occasions most situations. Look at this cool little little inlet here, or whatever you'd call it. Not rad. It's nice. These guys have a mega house here. Oh, it's enormous. Like, this is their this is their palazzo here. It's all redone. Magnificent. On the other side, they actually have water right in front of them, and they have balconies. And they have this huge terrace and then something that's extremely rare in Venice, a garden. Look with statues all along, all protected uh, with uh, wire so no one can vandalize them. Although I'd, I see zero vandalism in this town. I noticed Paul, if you're watching Paul Thorpe, he was putting some brick background. You need to come to Italy, man. You'd be spoiled for choice. Look at that for a brick background. Look at that. <laughs> And you've got your choice of uh, of tones. There's a deeper, more orangey one. Anyway, already rambling. Two minutes into the video. Uh, let's answer some questions then. Let me see. Got bombarded today, guys. Everyone's sitting at home. Obviously, nothing better to do than ask a scruffy Irish man what he thinks about watches. And life in general. This is normally a cafe I go to down here, but they decided to close on the weekends, on a Saturday. And it broke my heart. So I have to go looking for coffee. How could that be hard, you might ask? It's Italy, but since lockdown, a lot of places just aren't even bothering opening during the day. Here's the other side of that palazzo. Look. And they have their own landings for uh, their private boats. And you can see some of the of the terrace. I hope I'm not wobbling the camera all over the place. Some of their terrace over there. Absolutely no one in there at the moment. Look, every shutter is closed. It's just sitting there dormant. What a waste. Um, let's look at some questions. It seems there's a nice potpourri of watch questions and general kind of life questions too, which I kind of enjoy that. Sometimes I get a little tired just talking about watches. I shouldn't really say that, should I? <laughs> oh, watch the channel, it's not very appropriate. Ush. I'm always opening me trap. Actually, the water, I'm just noticing here, I go digressing again. The water is super low now. I mean, the other day, this water was completely flooded here like eight or nine inches now it's even lower than it regularly is and i know why if any of you guys saw my um 2020 rolex 41 millimeter video where i tried it on i was talking about the mose which is the the system they built it took them bloody decades to finish it typical italian style and uh but they they did and this year is the first year they've been using it it stops the water from uh you know it slows down the currents from the adriatic coming into the lagoon and for the first time ever they've been able to fight the uh the elements here which is great because right now this whole place should be completely flooded they've saved they've saved the city so it's miraculous. 
Okay, I'm gonna take the one, that looks like my bus. I'll take the one over to San Marco and uh, get myself a coffee. Let me see where my goddamn mask is though, because I ain't getting on any bateo without a mask. Let me tell you that. Here it is. These are some of the most beautiful hotels in the world. That's the Griti Palace over there. That's where Tom Cruise was staying recently when he was filming that from the new Mission Impossible films. One of the most beautiful hotels ever. It's right there, gorgeous. And over here you have the Bauer Palazzo. They have a beautiful outdoor area there. I've gone for breakfast there a few times. My uh, relatives in LA keep keep me up sometimes on on uh, Zoom calls, you know. I just keep drinking, keep talking. It's 9 p.m. for them, but it's 6 a.m. for me, you know. So sometimes I just go for breakfast over at the Bower. It's pretty nice. the one steamed up. This is just a short hop over to uh, San Marco. That's a taxi. That's what a taxi looks like here. Hotel Regina here, Hotel Europa, St. Regis. And you have the Bowler, fantastic place. They have a nice roof deck up top and stuff, as you can imagine. The Biennale di Venezia, that's a kind of a big hotel as well. That's an ambulance. Uh, that one going really fast. Let's see if the the Illy store is open. Yeah, it looks like Illy's open. The quicker I can get coffee into me, the sooner I can start asking, answering questions. See, I can't even speak right now. Nurse.
un giorno posso chiedere un latte macchiato da portare via senza schiume se è possibile grazie ho some nice cakes here the espresso machines this is what the Italians call the mocha they all use it in their homes every Italian ha home has a mocha <clears throat> and of course the traditional cakes around now are the panettone and the pandoro delicious stuff All right, I have the drugs and I'm willing to take them. Oh dear God, Ooh. that's needed, very much so. It's kind of ugly along here right now. They're doing all this restauro, as they would say here, a restoration, fixing, fixing the place up. So, nice spot here, check it out here, got this little inlet of water here, all the gondolas parked, beautiful, right, question time, let's take a look, <clears throat> what have we got? <clears throat> Darren Taylor, you've asked some questions before, Darren. How are you, man? How do you compare the notoriety you are enjoying as a solo artist, in quotations, in the watch world comparing to sharing the stage in a rock band? Um, well, I mean, for one, it's not exactly notoriety. It's just, it's just a watch channel. It's not like I'm Philip DeFranco or something that's still small potatoes actually in even in the watch world um, but if you're asking me how is it to be kind of yeah just like a single entity rather than part of a group which I was for 25 years you get very used to kind of dividing the I mean, I'm not even going to call it Limelight. We were we were a popular-ish band, but we never sold a million records or anything. We never made it to that level. We never had a radio hit. We got fans all over the world and all, but uh, it was it never reached those kind of levels. So I, I can't really uh, speak of any uh, such notoriety, really. Uh, but if you're asking me the difference between, I see what you're asking. I'll stop avoiding the question dodging the question it's it's not really any different honestly we weren't a band that um you know some bands it's all the singer and the members the other members of the band are anonymous you know they're invisible nearly um we weren't one of those bands we were kind of everyone in the band had their own particular style and their own personality and uh, we shared a lot of the writing uh so on so it's a bit like uh it was a bit like a U2 situation like everyone knows Bono but most people also know The Edge and you know Larry and Adam or uh wouldn't be quite like the Beatles because that of course had different writers singers John would sing Paul would sing George would sing even Ringo would sing but uh yeah uh, I, it wasn't really that we weren't one of the, it wasn't like Coldplay you know Chris Martin everyone would recognize him but would you recognize any of the other members of that band I don't think so uh, unless you're a big fan it wasn't one of those situations it certainly wasn't anything on the scale anyway so uh, but I see what you're asking it's yeah I guess it's I was a bit of a dictator in that band anyway I did a lot of the arranging and the writing and 
you know, every group, every band needs some some sort of leader, someone to put their foot down, because there's always disagreements. And though I thought it was an absolute democracy as bands go, and everybody had uh, a lot of input, uh, you do need someone behind a steering wheel sometimes who, who needs to make the decision, okay, are we turning left or are we turning right? Because if it's, if it's a complete democracy, you could wind up kind of bringing yourselves to a halt sometimes in, in that regard. So um, I don't really feel much difference, to be honest. But again, the hell is a watch channel? It's a small watch channel. Go ask uh, one of the bigger channels how, they, how they're enjoying their notoriety. But thanks for the question. Benjamin Vaughn, do you ever see your collection taking a turn towards more vintage watches? Why or why not? Um, I assume so. I think collections evolve um, over time. It's an organic process, as they say. I assume me this time 10 years or 20 years maybe I'm all vintage I think older gentlemen like vintage watches correct I mean that's isn't that kind of a the thing to do I like oh well now I'm thinking of a couple of personalities on YouTube that contradict that thought completely I think I'll probably end up there yeah probably uh the Kokai. They're such a nuisance, man. All right, do your thing. All right, you done? The end of it? Thanks. Uh, Paul is asking, why so many similar Rolex watches? Um, God, you're right, Paul. I do have very sim similar watches in the Rolex world. I think it's you get into collecting them, the different models. You like them for different reasons. You know, I've seen a collection of Speedies. What's that channel? Revolution Watch, is it? That very nice, soft-spoken gentleman. I, I don't know his name, shame to say, but he's a cool channel, Revolution Watch, and he does a lot of interviews with a lot of uh, heads of, of, company, of watch companies and everything. But he has one video where he's talking to some distinguished gentleman in Britain somewhere about his Speedmaster collection. All the guy has is Speedies. That's all he's interested in. He's just a huge box of like 100 Speedies. He has everything from the CK2915, the version 1, uh, the really expensive one, all the way up to the newer stuff. And everything in between, the 145022s, all of those, chocolate dial, what have you. The whole thing. And... Uh, I bet if that guy's got his eye on a new watch, it'll be another Speedy. <laughs> it's just, that's his thing. He probably doesn't even consider any others. Oh, yeah? Yeah, really? Okay, got it. Thanks for letting me know. Ah, bloody Kokai. Kokai is the dialect here for... Um, what do you call them in English? Se seagulls. Christ. Losing my mind here. All right, fellas. Lots to say today, huh? Yeah, the, in Italian, uh, seagull is gabbiano, the gabbiani. But the um, the Venetians call them cocai, uh, which I think might be onomatopoeic, right? Cocai, cocai. Because they do yelp like that. Um, why so many similar Rolex watches was a question. I know I, some of them are identical, right? Like when I got the, the Sea Dweller, the two-tone Sea Dweller, you could mistake that one for the sub. My two-tone sub because it's also black. Honestly, when I was getting that watch, I thought I would, just, I would probably just sell the sub. I just haven't gotten around to listing it and all that. If anybody wants to make me a decent offer on that, on the two-tone sub, maybe I'll consider it. It's a beauty, full set and all that stuff. Uh, I don't know, man. Does my collection look monotone in some way? Maybe it is. Uh, 
Let me see here. If you could only have one watch for life, which one would you choose? Doesn't have to be a watch you currently own. My pick would be Rolex Explorer 1 or Omega Seamaster Aquaterra. That's from Corey Williams. Thanks, Corey, for the question. I love the Aquaterra. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was just looking at the green one there in the window here, the boutique. I should go over there now and take a look. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, one watch, it's hard. It's hard to decide on that one. I'd love to be a one watch guy, though. Wouldn't it be cool? Just one man and his watch. You know, you wouldn't have to think about changing stuff or selling stuff or swapping stuff or anything like that. You could just put on your watch in the morning and take it off at night. <laughs> That's what most people do. Most people aren't watch fanatics. <laughs> it turns out crazy people. Well, that coffee disappeared in two seconds flat. Um, it depends what the what the scenario is. Like, if I was selling all my watches because I came on hard times, for example, then let me give you a look at this. This is nice. Look at that. Uh, well then, you know, if I needed the money desperately or something, or I had to sell everything off, it would make sense to just keep the Seamaster 300M, right? Because that's a kind of an everyday, it's a diver, it's rugged, but you could also wear it with a suit. It's also increasingly hard to get a good condition, one from, from uh, what is that one, 1993. So, but then if it was, if it wasn't a money issue and I could just keep any expensive watch, I'd be tempted to keep, you know, I love my Speedy, but it is delicate, right? It's not a waterproof watch or anything. I really, I just think the Speedy is the quintessential watch. Maybe the Daytona, maybe just have one two-tone Daytona. And only wear a watch when it's when it's an occasion to wear a nice watch. So, uh, who is this? Any watches, photos on Instagram? What are your hold on? What are your favorite bands? Would you consider a musicians and their watches episode? Would your view of a musician change because of their watch choice? <laughs> That's a weird one. Okay, I like Depeche Mode. But well, I wasn't tempted to get an Hublot DM limited edition. Oh, wow. Who wears one of those? Is it Dave? It's probably Dave. Uh, I like Depeche Mode too, man. Amazing band. I was, uh, I've had the honor to uh, do a lot of work with Steve Line, who produced them for a while. Did a lot of their engineering. Me and Steve did a lot of projects together, including a few here in Italy. Uh, yeah, great band. One of my favorite bands. Oh, I'm a 70s guy. Like, I like all that prog rock stuff. Genesis, yes. Rush, all that stuff. I like a lot of the uh, new wave stuff coming out of New York in the past 10 years. It's really hard to kind of lock it in. It's probably a shorter list to tell you what I don't like, to be honest. There's a few people over here in the piazza. This is their Christmas tree. The electronic Christmas tree they put up. That's so Venice, you know? They don't need to make anything that looks old and classic because everything around it is. So they usually go for the, the juxtaposition. Look at that, isn't that nice? That's the Palazzo Ducale there. Well, let's walk into the into the piazza. As you can see, these boards are all up in case it got flooded. And they have more of them over there, but it but it's not flooded because of the Mose. Mose, by the way, stands for... Uh, no, it doesn't stand for. It means, it translates as Moses. <laughs> so the name of the partition they used to save their 
city from the floods is Moses. Of course, they had to go for a biblical reference. Um, let's have a look at Autumn Arpigay. They're over there. Let's see if we can see anything in the window. Yeah, like that's their window display. It's a piece of art. Since its inception, the passionate women and men at the heart of Autumn RP Gay have worked together to create an extraordinary, the extraordinary. So it's all their staff, mini tiny pictures of their of their staff, with some poking out, presumably more important characters, all making a a photograph or picture piece of art. And that's the uh, That's the AD, very small, very tiny. Of course, you don't need a big AD to sell watches, right? It's not like it's not like you're selling pianos or something. <laughs> so around here, look at this. They put up the lights here. It's very nice. This was flooded last week. I took some uh, video of the reflections of the flood. But as you can see right now, it is dry. Here's Rolex. See what they got in the window. They have a couple of rose gold yachties over there. And a rhodium dial yacht. And then your typical two tone day just up front. And you have your classic Cellinis. Look at them. <laughs> <laughs> there's a big presidential there there's a 41 day date on the presidential but it's got diamonds around the uh, the bezel which is it's a little tacky that way I think stick diamonds around the thing <clears throat> let's take a look at Panerai the boys in Panerai if they see me they're gonna get excited because I nearly bought a watch in here a while ago look at that beauty in the center delicious hey so see they did get excited I told you he's hoping I'm going to walk in there now and complete business for the week look at that centerpiece my god it's stunning that is stunning. See, I go for more of that Panerai world than that. That's not really, that's not really my thing there or this one on the top right. Look at that thing. Talk about sparkle. Wow. Absolute beauty. I will be doing a video on Panerai very soon. All right, get some more questions, O'Malley. What do we got? Oh yeah, favorite bands. Oh, dear God, I can't even. I don't know. I wouldn't even know where to start. But yeah, I mean, I like bands that are interesting stuff. I'm, you know, I'm a musical snob, guys. I'm into like, I'm way more into music than I'm into watches. Put it that way. So I mean, bands have to be interesting. They have to be powerful. They have to be deep. You know, I can't just listen to, you know, it's very rare that I'll turn on the radio and hear a song that I like, you know, it's, when you're a musician like that and you're into bands, you don't live in a reality where the population listens to the same music as you do. It's just not something that ever happens. It's probably like a chef walking around, like a Michelin star chef walking around and seeing awful food everywhere because of course most food out there just isn't high quality it's just cheeseburgers and sandwiches and whatever whereas some crazy chef who knows a lot about you know cuisine and how to put together flavors probably cringes looking at what people eat every day you know something like that probably you know it's very rare i remember 
When we first got to the States, that was like the biggest shocker for me. We went uh, for dinner in an Irish pub there in Long Island City called Mike Riley's. Long, long gone now, unfortunately. But uh, they had the radio on. And Rush was on the radio. <laughs> I was in a pub in New York and Rush came on the radio. And I grew up in Ireland and then came over to Italy for a spell, obviously. And uh, I don't know why that's obviously. But anyway. Um, and we would just never hear the bands. Me and my friends, my brothers, for example, we'd never hear the music we liked on the radio. <laughs> it's like... The radio was, you know, Tina Turner and, you know, whatever, <laughs> Rick Astley, you know, all that stuff. And, uh, you know, it was, it was depressing. It was dep the radio was depressing to me. It would depress me. And, uh, you know, we get to the States and bloody rushes on the radio. And then I don't know what came on after. I realized now that all the years later, it was probably my good friend, Eno Mali, because <laughs> he's the DJ over at uh, Rock 104.3, classic rock station in New York. But at the time, I wouldn't have known of that station, you know. But uh, I think we're more than friends, me and Ian. We're probably related. We call each other Cuz, because he's an O'Malley and I'm an O'Malley. But we've yet to sit down and figure out the, uh, the lineage, the connection there. Anyway, I'm rambling once again. God. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Italians are extra loud today. Okay. Chronomat. I don't know your full name. It's an Instagram page. I just took a snapshot of it, which chopped off the end of your name. Sorry about that. You're asking me what are my thoughts about Breitling. I like Breitling. I know they're being shit on in the market right now. But I like them. I love I, I love the cockpit, the Breitling cockpit. I did a big video on it. Go look at it in Siena. And uh, I love the Navi. It's only a matter of time before I get a Navi timer. I just need to decide which one I, I'm going to get. Am I going to go for a bracelet style or put it on a strap or go for a gold dial or gold accents on the dial or not? Or, Go for dark or bright, you know, it's just one of those things. But I don't mind that they use um, modified ETA movements in some of their watches and so on. Also, it's a great time to love Breitling. You know, if you're into Breitling and you like the look of it, Jesus, get one now while they're super soft. You can probably walk into a, an AD or a reseller and hammer them down in the price easily. They'd probably hand it to you for free. Not really. But, uh, yeah. Bert Lanetta is asking, money no object, what watch would you buy? Also, your favorite album, question mark. <laughs> Jesus. You can't ask me that. What's your name, Bert? Bert in Dundee. Hey, Bert. You can't ask it. You can't ask me what my favorite album is. That's just, that's like asking somebody what their favorite child is or something. It's just, when you're as deep into the music world as I've been my whole life, you can't. I don't have one. I don't have a favorite album. Or it would change from day to day depending on what I'm listening to. I'll tell you what I've been listening to recently. I've been getting back into uh, one of my favorites of all time. I can tell you that is The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway by uh, Genesis. I love albums that are... A complete movie you know I like when an album is like a concept album that it's started you could listen to songs individually or the whole thing is a whole story made up of songs and that one is like two rec two vinyl records worth it's a long story and by the time you get to the end you feel like you've just been at the cinema or something I, I loved that I grew up with that that's the right way to do an album in my opinion but uh, I mean, we all know the greatest albums of all time, and I don't disagree, you know. Abbey Road, Dark Side of the Moon, uh, Rumours, whatever, you know, the list is long. Um, 
of new artists I love um, I love I have loved what Adele has been doing she's magnificent I love that Billie Eilish girl she's really good her new stuff her I mean her new stuff her only stuff she's 19 years old or something I think she's really good it's very very well put together stuff very powerful and uh, but yeah I can't tell you what my favorite album is let me answer a watch question money no object I don't know, a 5980 maybe, or a Lange, a Lange 1, I don't know, uh, it's a hard one, I try not to think about that too much to be honest, it's like, you know, leafing through a, a, a yacht's brochure, so I can't afford any of them, so what the hell am I doing, I'm just torturing myself. <laughs> So I don't really want to be looking at Vacheron Costa that much because I know I'll just start getting depressed. I think I made a video there last year here in Venice actually where I was trying on a $170,000 Vacheron or something like that. And at the time I had a sub on, a sub date that was I think brand new at the time. And I put it on almost like with a kind of a disappointed feeling. <laughs> After I had the $150,000 Platinum Vacheron thing, I was just nuts. It was just high horology, man. Was just, so, all of a sudden, the sub felt like a toy. I don't know. Ask me when money is no object. How about that? <laughs> Which is definitely not the case right now. John Patterson. Hey, John. I know you already did a video on protecting your timepiece from scratches and dings, but I seem to be very hard on my watches, even with trying to be careful. Any additional advice or techniques, methods of protection on, on removing your watches? Thanks, love the channel. Oh boy. I mean, if you're hard on your watches, that's you. And your watches are an extension of you. Just buy tough watches or wear tough watches. I never thought I'd say this, but maybe go out and buy a G-Shock <laughs> or something like that. One of those Zero West watches, those things are tanks. If you can break one of those, take photos. I want to see because, I mean, unless you're wrestling with a rhinoceros or something, I think those things are, in, you know, indestructible. Um... But yeah, I mean, if you're tough on watches, then maybe you should be thinking about uh, about uh, cheaper stuff and only wear the nice pieces. I'm going to get out of here because this is just screaming kids. Um, maybe just wear the nice pieces on the nice occasions. You know, when you're putting on a nice shirt, a nice suit or something, going to dinner, and you know you're not going to be in a situation where you're reaching around too much jeopardizing your beautiful timepiece I don't know what else to say to you man I mean what are you going to do like do what people do with their iPhones and stick a big plastic cover on the thing <laughs> what's the point in even wearing a nice watch then better get my mask kind of handy here ready in case somebody spots me I'll put her on for a minute, how about that? See all the uh, sad parked gondolas. No business at the moment. There's the Hard Rock Cafe. I must admit every now and then I do fancy a cheeseburger and I go in there. It's really touristy though, obviously. Imagine coming all the way to a beautiful place like Venice and going in to the Hard Rock. <laughs> Missed the point. Um, so, next question. <clears throat> Zaz wants to know, can you do a quick tour of your new place in Venice? No, I can't. And stop being so damn nosy. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are asking me that. I'm like, I'm not showing you guys the interior of my house. 
Um, so no is the answer. Sorry, man. It's lovely, though. So, okay, watch style. Hi, I love your channel very much. Thanks, man. I assume you're a man. My question is about the Rolex 39mm versions. Uh, in the past, there were 39mm Oyster Perpetual, of course. And the Explorer 1. What is your opinion on the change of the OP to 41? And do you expect that the Explorer 1 will remain as a 39 or go to 41? I think it will. It may not go to 41 because that would put it in direct competition then with the OP. Maybe they'll go to 40, but yes, the general um, flow of things has been that they've been getting larger. When everyone was saying that the sub was going to get smaller and slimmed down, I was like, no guys. Rolex watches are just getting bigger, and that's the news. Uh, what do I think of the OPs going to 41? I dig it, because I'm a big, chunky fucker. So, it works for me. They look good on my wrist. Some nice illustrations, actually. I like that one. Look, they're all sinking into the water at the end. That's cool. What we got down here? Fancy Christmas decorations made out of Murano glass. Look at that. Wow. That's the uh, that's the Christmas tree you don't want the cat going near. Bloody destroy them, smash the beautiful pieces. Andreas asks, what do you think of the new Snoopy 3 Speedy in terms of value? In terms of value, I don't know. I mean, I, I think the new Snoopy is really interesting. It's really cool. They are kind of, they're a little uh, eccentric with their uh, with their styles, Omega. You know, they, they play off the whole moon landing thing, space exploration connection in a kind of a funny, playful way, don't they? Some people don't like that. It annoys them a little. I think I need another coffee. I'm gonna go in here and get one. Put my mask first. Value-wise, I don't know. What is it? Ten grand or something? Mind you, if you're if you manage to pick one up, you're looking at. You know, an appreciation already of a few grand at least. Probably flip that thing for between 15 and 20 if you were so inclined. Um, I like it. It's a fun watch. I mean, the blue and white, it's not for every occasion, is it? But it's fun. Um, if you have the money and you're if you're looking at that watch, you know what it is, you know the history, you know why it's a thing. If that's your thing, go for it. I mean, there are very few watches outside of Patek and Rolex that are very difficult to get. And if you're lucky enough to get one, are going to appreciate in value. And the Snoopy is one of them just is so if that's what you're after if, it, if the value of it if you're doing shop talk here then yeah I mean why not Ruggiero is asking JLC Reverso or Cartier Tank <laughs> that's a tough one isn't it uh, I mean JLC is the I mean it's one of the kings I think uh, le Coultre just to piss everyone off. Gigi Le Coup. Not Jaeger. Quit it with that nonsense, you guys. I got so much crap over that. It could be called Jaeger. It's not. <laughs> There's a French version. The German has the A with the umlaut. And the French has the A-E. It doesn't matter that it was originally a German name. It's There's a French version of the name. It's like Henry versus Henri. 
or Michael versus Michel. Are you gonna talk, tell some? You're gonna call some guy Henri when his name is Henry, or vice versa? You wouldn't do it anyway. Whatever. I digress. Um, I think if I think the the real watch enthusiast would go for the JLC Reverso over the Cartier. Because Cartier, when you think about it, can I walk out in this thing? Oh, I can. When you think about it, Cartier is, um, they make a lot of stuff. You know, Cartier make other goods, you know. Don't they make bags and things and lots of jewelry? JLC is, is the watchmaker's watchmaker, right? So if you're a true watch fanatic, then the reverse. So I assume you're looking for a classic dress watch if you're going between the Cartier tank and the JLC. Nicholas Leroy. How do you cope with changing home often and having to meet new people all over again? <laughs> well, I don't know. That's a tough question to ask me because it's something I'm... It's, I've been doing it all my life, moving around the place. Even in New York, I don't know how many apartments I lived in. Maybe 30 different ones. Hey, speaking of Breitling. Some interesting pieces there. These are monsters. Look at the size of those things. Good God. Normally they have Patek here, but they have nothing out on display. I saw a Calatrava there recently, it was beyond stunning, beyond simple and perfect. Let's see what we got. It's a brand new boutique here. All their Seamasters, big fat Kronos. That's a popular one there with the uh, silver dial. Let's see what we got here. Look at these Planet Oceans. It's a two tone. One in 45, and I think that's a 39 mil down there. And oh, now there is a watch I would, I would love right now. Green Dial Aquaterra. Beautiful. I mean, that is, that's a date just killer, that watch. There's that world timer thing. I see a lot of people talking about that recently. It's very big though, isn't it? It's really big. It's high detail on that dial, which is nice. There's some ladies ones there, very nice. This is gaudy and awful, the one with the, with the jewels. The diamond studded bezel. I don't know why that's a thing at all. I'll never get my head around it. Let me go over to uh, Campo San Stefano. So yeah, about moving around. It's just something I've always done. I don't know, it's like asking a, a bird what it's like to have wings. I mean, I just, it's, it's my reality, I don't. I haven't known any other reality than that. Uh, getting to know new people. Well, it's not like I'm knocking on the on the doors of any place I go and saying, hi, I'm your new neighbor. Um, I'm also like, I'm pretty friendly being Irish. I kind of make conversation with people and I'm outgoing in that way, but I also kind of, I'm also a bit of a recluse as well, like, um, and I have my great friends from over the years that I stay in contact with, I mean, the way things work in the world as we know now is you can be in contact forever with people at the touch of a button. wines in there nice and you know you don't have to be around them so I'm on I mean 
I'm here in Venice and I spend most of the evenings my conversations are with friends in New York over FaceTime. There's some nice pieces here. I'm still on the hunt for one for my uh, table. Still haven't got myself a nice big piece. These are a bit huge though. A little bit exaggerated. I mean, it has a certain adventure to it. Obviously, you're changing your life every once in a while. But, uh... I don't know. I mean, it's just something I've gotten used to. I would. I don't think I do it completely willingly, though. In some cases, you know, you get a place, or you have work there or something, and you, then you're forced to move on. So you have to kind of be practical. I'm not sure I could um, imagine staying in the one place for my whole life. I think I have to stay on the move, you know, a little bit. At least that's what I'm used to. I mean, New York was crazy. New York was... Every, every couple of years I'd move. Sometimes I'd move twice in a year. Um, wow, that store is spooky. Look at that. That is spooky shit. Look at that. So Scotty A is asking. Uh, first of all, he says thanks for the best watch content on YouTube. You, you, you're on the right track there, man. Thanks. Wow, look at that shit. Holy moly. This is gargantuan. This is mega stuff. Wow. <clears throat> anyway, you were saying, Scotty A, sorry. Do you have any set intervals between watch purchases? Or is it see it, want it, buy it? <laughs> Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you. Um, I don't. I don't have set intervals now. I should. It's unhealthy. It's dangerous. Honestly, you come across the right piece and you've got to just grab it. You know, expecting to find the piece you want or something you love in the precise moment that you can also, you know, allow yourself to get it. It's kind of closing your window a little bit there, isn't it? You know, <clears throat> you should be able to, uh, when you come across the opportunity, you know, I got a call there around this time last year, actually. No, a little, maybe it was November. Um, for my AD, because they got a bunch of stainless steel pieces in and I wasn't in the market but how could I turn them down you know how could I say no I had to just grab one because I'd be mad not to right but I was not in the market at, at all for a watch it was a an unnecessary purchase but it's like getting offered free money you know they say hey do you want some stainless steel sports? It's like, how could you turn it down? <clears throat> this is nice. I like this store. Bigger balls. Very nice. I mean, you got to be careful because, like, that Aquaterra, that green dial one, back of the boutique back there, 
I can't go into that boutique. I'll buy that thing. So you have to just... It's like Alcoholics Anonymous or something. you got to stay away from it. Like, I see it in the window. I'm like, I'm not going to try that on. Because if I try that on and get into a conversation, next thing I'm going to purchase the damn thing. So you got to slow down a bit. I've seen people do that and say, you know, I bought a watch. I'm not going to buy another watch for another six months or for a year or something like that. They kind of pace themselves. But to me, that's just kind of closing the window of opportunity. You could come across the perfect piece or the, or the perfect deal, the perfect opportunity. And just because... Because, 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 because you turn it down. And why would you do that? Look at this. So, it's probably right to pace yourself. I would never ask someone or tell someone to follow my example in anything, probably. <laughs> I don't do what I do. It's not a good example. You see they have the boards out here for the um, for the flooding. Look how high they expected the flooding to be. But of course it's not needed at all. Honestly I can't stand Venice today because it's just it's it's Saturday and it's all Italian families which is fine, but it's their country, it's their city. I'm the stranger, but they, they just shout at each other as they walk down the street. Usually the mom is just a constant and the father just with his head low because he just can't stand it any longer. I know I'm dark. Look at this palazzo here. Look at this baby. Monster. Somebody live in there? Christ. That's amazing. Hear that? There's no one in the store. Nice. Hmm. Some interesting stuff. Amarones. Marono. Hmm. But there's no one in here. And I feel weird being in someone's store without their permission. That was so unusual. Maybe he's gone to the bathroom or something. Bernardo Petro. Why Italy? Why <laughs> Really? Look. <laughs> Why not? Now, actually, I came here years ago with my band and did a lot of gigging here in my early 20s and uh and had a daughter i have a daughter who's italian so i'd always even after i went to the states i would still come back over and visit her obviously so there was a connection there and then it was always my dream when i got to a kind of certain age and a certain uh resource level you might say that I would uh, move to Venice, kind of a, a dream I've had for years, kind of um, living in a, in a dream. Check out this, uh, this tower here, look. It's about to fall over any minute, look. <laughs> it's just, like whoever lives in its shadow in that direction, I hope they say their Hail Marys and Our Fathers every night. Because it's only a matter of time before the thing just goes. 
Uh, as Irish as I am, I was born in Ireland. I have a very Irish name, very strong Irish uh, connection and and uh, lineage as well, actually. I'll talk about that in a different episode. I still feel like a citizen of the world. Like, we're in such a small planet now. We can take a plane to anywhere. If you're a European citizen, you can. there are so many countries you can just walk into, get a house, get a job, go to school. There are no limits, no visa required, nothing like that. And uh, so if you grow up in Ireland, you can always just one day say, screw it, I'm sick of this place and I want to go to Belgium. <laughs> I want to go live in France. And, uh, and that's it. It's just a decision you have to make. Um, I kind of got to know the culture here very well, learned the language, etc. They live a very beautiful life in Italy. The, the basic standard of living is very high. Even if you don't have money, you still live okay. You know, there are homeless, of course, but it's not like there's a safety net. It's a social democratic country, so you, you know, you break your leg or something, you can go to the, to the hospital and not have to worry about the bill. Uh, I know that for Americans that sounds crazy, but it's kind of the reality in most other modern civilized countries. And Italy is no exception. Um, does it have its flaws? Of course it does. Uh, the people are great, but... <laughs> if there's any weakness to this country, it's the people themselves and not the actual place. You know. Somebody's playing a trumpet. Or trombone. There's a music school up there. That's a school. You can hear pianos, people practicing. That's where the music was coming from. Um. <laughs> Have you ever had the feeling? So what is that song? Uh, remind me what that is. Anybody out there recognize that one? You look around each corner, hoping that she's there. Um, yeah, it's look. Italy is amazing. It's amazing. Food's great. Architecture outrageous they have so much that's the thing like any one of these buildings here if it was in any american town <laughs> it would be the center of attention but they've just got like so much packed into small spaces so church after church after church it's like each cathedral is like you you couldn't if you tried visit them all and learn all their history. And believe you me, they do try. The Italians try. They learn their own culture, their own art, and they drop dead eventually. Like there's just, they'll never reach the end of it. They'll never get to French art or British art or Dutch. Because uh, they're just, there's so much to get through in Italy, be it classical art, architecture, music, 
theater, uh, literature. I mean, Dante. Like, that stuff is nuts. Um, so, I don't know. I just, uh, I always felt the plan was, uh, the plan was to have a place in Venice and a place in New York and just fly back and forth have the best of both worlds because I, I still feel like a New Yorker at heart after you spend more than 12 or 15 years in New York you begin to become connected connected to it it's an invisible umbilical and uh, oh man look how messed up that tower looks right now just at that angle 